Welcome back. Now, we all know that our eye health is something that is very, very important. So today I've come out to Southwestern Eye Center. We're going to be talking to Dr. Kuzman today, and we're going to be talking about cataracts. I know we're going to kind of dive into that. Let's kind of go a little bit even broader, doctor, and let's just start with the anatomy of the eye and something we all can just kind of learn today. Sure, with pleasure. Uh, let's look at the eye and talk about how the eye actually functions. The eye really consists of the cornea, which is the front clear transparent membrane. Behind that we have the iris. In the middle of the eyes we have the pupil. Behind the iris we have the lens, which is naturally and normally clear. Behind that we have a cavity that contains a jelly-like substance that we call vitreous. And behind that we have the retina. And the retina connects to the nerve, which leads into the brain. So let's compare the eye to a camera. In order to get a good picture, one really needs a clear lens and one needs a really well-functioning film. What happens at the eye is that we have two lenses. The first lens is the cornea, which is actually the most powerful lens. It's about a 60 diopter lens. And then there's a lens inside of the eye, which sits inside of the eye, which is responsible for focusing the light rays onto the retina. This is the lens that actually becomes opaque or cloudy and causes is, is called a cataract and it inhibits the the light to get into the back part of the eye in the retina we have a central part that's called the macula the macula is an area that's responsible for the very fine vision that's the reading vision the depth perception the discriminatory vision and the color vision so in order to get a good picture we need a clear lens and we need a well functioning film and so who, who can get cataracts? Is this something that's by age? Yeah, it's the most common cataract that we see is called a senile cataract. Uh -huh. And usually that occurs as we grow older and occurs in the age groups of about 30s to the 55, 60s to 80s. And it's more accidental clouding of the central part of the lens. There are other causes of cataracts, such as congenital cataracts, and there are many, many varieties of congenital cataracts incurring in infants, which should be treated very early on to preserve vision, because if it's not corrected before the age of 11, people will become amblyopic and have a lazy eye. Other forms of cataract are related to diseases, metabolic diseases such as diabetes, myotonic dystrophy, galactosemia, and then there's also cataracts that are related to injuries, trauma such as uh, non-penetrating trauma, just a blunt, in, in, a blunt uh, blow to the mm -hmm. eye, or a penetrating injury, something that enters the eye and creates a cataract. And is there several treatment options that we could take? Yes, there are many. The first is to try to get the best possible vision in the patient by either using glasses or contact lenses. Uh, if that does not suffice, then the next option would be surgery. And when we are talking about surgery, I know there's been a lot of advancements. Yes, there's been tremendous advancements in surgery. Formerly, we used to make a very large incision, take out the cataract manually with a freezing instrument that we used to call a cryoprobe, and then use lots of sutures to close the incision. And that was with high risk, it was a long surgery, required a week's hospital stay. And that's advanced to this point now where we're using ultrasonic technology called phacoemulsification. Phacos is the word, the Greek word for lens. Emulsification is to emulsify. So we use what, what people talk of as the laser or the ultrasound or the phacoemulsifier. What we do is we create a 2.2 millimeter incision around the edge of the limbus of the eye, the very edge of the eye. And then what we do, if we're looking, thinking of the, uh, go back to the um, avocado pear, we create a little circle in the skin of the avocado pear, creating a window through which we can get to the actual cataract. And we place the, the probe, which is an ultrasonic tip made of titanium, and vibrates back and forth at 40,000 cycles per second, and it emulsifies the cataract, and we suck it out. So we just leave the shell, or the film, or the skin of the cataract, the original cataract, in, in place. Then through that incision, we place an intraocular lens because we have to replace the lens that we've taken out. And you have some of the, the lenses. I sure do. Um, right here, we have so there are three different kinds of lenses that we can use. Uh, the one is called a monofocal lens, which is a lens that just corrects at one distance. Mm -hmm. And we can create that distance uh, for distance or for near or for intermediate. Uh, so this is the most, the most popular and most common lens that we use, fully covered by the insurance companies. Then we have a second kind of lens that we call a toric lens. A toric lens is for those patients that have a lot of astigmatism. And just for the general population, astigmatism means that the cornea, instead of being round and curved like a tennis ball or a golf ball, is shaped more like a football. It's more elongated, so it creates a distortion in the vision. So this lens, that's a toric lens, has the astigmatic correction in the lens itself. 
There's one more uh, that we call a multifocal lens. A multifocal lens is a lens that has concentric rings of lenses and work for distance, intermediate, and near. So it enables people to go, patients to go without glasses for the most part. And we're now so sophisticated that the central part of this lens, we can create the reading at different distances. So we might put the lens in the one eye, creating a distance for, for like shopping, reading labels. And in the other eye, we can use it for like reading books. So they have a multitude of um, distances that they can see with using this type of lens. Well, this is amazing advancements, and I'm sure people that are dealing with cataracts at any age are, are very happy to hear that there's so many options for us. Now, before I let you go, what is the recovery time from this surgery? Recovery time is very, very quick. Because the small incision is sutureless, it's mm -hmm. painless, it's done under topical anesthesia, uh, we ask the patients to use common sense, but generally within you know 10 days to two weeks, they're pretty much back to normal wow. activities. Wow, that's amazing. I think this is all so uh, interesting to learn and uh, all the advancements that we're doing with the cataract. So I want to thank you, doctor, so much for letting us come out and look at this and, and learn more about it. My pleasure. Now for more details about treating eye cataracts and taking care of your eyes in general, log on to SWI.com or call 790-8888.